Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing our sojourn into the land of serendipity and going over the last of the Morgan books that I possess. Not sure it was the last one ever written, as in total number written, not order of publishing date. So today we are looking at Morgan Morning. I remember this being sad. Consider this your second warning. So I already gave a warning in Morgan and You. So, Morgan Morning, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. A young horse wanders to a mystical land and is turned into a unicorn. These front captions usually have a lesson. This is the story synopsis. I'm already concerned. Dedicated to the spirit and the being of a horse called Morgan, may he live forever in the enchanted island of Robin's mind. Stephen. And going on to the cover real quick, it's another very detailed cover, lots of nice shading on the flowers, and what I'm assuming to be a young Morgan. Far beyond tomorrow lies an emerald island where all things magical and real live together in perfect harmony. An island where the sun and moon come together to paint the sky the most amazing colors and hues. An island of bright and beautiful tomorrows. That sounds extremely familiar. Yeah, and the island always seems to be described as beyond tomorrow. Why is that such a thing? At the very center of the island is a crystal glade called the Meadows of Morning. The glade is surrounded on all sides by tall and magnificent mountains. The only way in or out of the meadows of morning is along a narrow, twisting trail that follows the river through the mountains. It is here, protected from all harm, that creatures from all over the island come to give birth to their young. Mothers of every description, those with feathers or fur, long legs or wings, come to this quiet sanctuary to give birth to their babies. And another wonderful illustration. This time we have a lot of pink in these illustrations. I'm guessing it's some type of flower. And we have a bunch of raccoons, a mother and I'm guessing her babies, a deer and her baby, and a bird and two babies. Are there any other babies hidden in this shot? I don't think so. I don't think so either. And we have some pine trees and just lots of nice detail and shading. It was in the early spring when the mountains were shedding their mantles of snow that a young colt was born in the deep grasses of the meadow. His mother had labored into the night and just as the sun was peeking over the mountains, Morgan was born into the world. He lay for a while, then stood on wobbly, shaky legs and gazed at all the wonders around him. He blinked his eyes in disbelief as the shadows fell away and all of nature looked at him. Step by step, with his small tail swishing back and forth in nervous anticipation, he explored bits and pieces of the meadow while his mother slept in the warm spring sunlight. With each step, Morgan became a little more confident until he was walking without hardly falling at all. Okay, he's a completely different color than even the cover of the book. This is where it's going to get interesting, isn't it? Yes, he's a perfectly normal brown horse with a darker brown mane and a white mark on his forehead. It's not a full blaze because it doesn't come all the way down his nose like his mother's. And we have lots of detail on the grass and flowers again. And of course, the horses. Day by day, his strength grew, and so did his curiosity. Occasionally, he would take off to chase a butterfly or a bee, and his mother would have to nicker for him to come back. One day, Morgan followed some squirrels across the meadow to their nest in the wide-spreading oak. He was so intent on watching them gather nuts and berries that he didn't hear his mother's call. Finally, when his curiosity was satisfied, he walked back to where his mother was neighing impatiently. Morgan, she said, as she nipped him on the ear, 
Someday your curiosity is going to get you in trouble. From now on, you are to stay by my side at all times. Do you understand? Morgan dropped his head and muttered, Yes, Mom. For the rest of the day, he stayed right at her side. But it wasn't much fun at all. And then something bad happens, and he learns a lesson. And once again, we have a lovely illustration with Morgan and his mother. The mother's eating grass, and we have two other horses in the background and more pine trees. The next day, the sunlight broke crisply on the meadows of morning. All the creatures, babies and mothers alike, rubbed the sleep from their eyes and went scurrying about the meadow searching for food. Morgan was no exception as he nibbled on the tender grasses that grew in the glade. Isn't he still young enough to be nursing? For the longest time, he stayed at his mother's side as he had been told. Suddenly, out of nowhere, five raccoons raced by with their tails sticking straight in the air. Without a thought or a glance back at his mother, Morgan raced after them. He didn't know where they were going, he just thought it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, and you can see the butts of the raccoons running off into the distance and little Morgan going, ooh. ooh. And I only have a slight problem with this illustration is the way the back tail looks. It looks kind of odd where it connects with the butt. On um, Morgan, yeah, it kind of looks like someone was slightly off on a game of pin the tail. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. Slightly off on if you pin the tail on the donkey. He followed the bushy tails through the meadow and onto the path that ran beside the river between the feather ferns and golden green moss. On and on they raced, five little raccoons and Morgan, zipping down the twisted trail. He had never had so much fun, nor seen so many new things in all his life. He's how old? As they raced on, the river became swifter, and a roaring sound filled the air. Morgan rounded a twisted corner in the path, but the raccoons had disappeared, as though they had vanished into thin air. He looked up and down the trail, but there was no sign of his furry friends. When did they ever meet, speak, become friends? I think they're just kind of using it in the general term, furry friends. Hmm. Then, on the other side of the river, at the very edge of a cascading waterfall, Morgan saw the raccoon skipping from rock to rock across the raging river. Oh, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Also, it looks like he has, like, grass in his mouth or something. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think he still brought a little breakfast with him on the run. And the way you s hinted at, I think this is where the fun happens. Without a thought for his safety, Morgan began walking on the stones set in the river. He was almost to the middle when he looked off to his side and saw the cascading waterfall. It went down and down a hundred feet or so and crashed with a roar at the bottom. He scrambled quickly to the next rock, but as fate would have it, his front hoof slipped on a bit of moss. Suddenly, Morgan found himself floating helplessly in the river as he was swept closer and closer to the brink of the waterfall. Mother! He neighed with all his strength, but it was to no avail. He was carried over the edge. Yeah, let us know if you didn't see that coming. More pink flowers in the background on the grass. Nicely illustrated water this time. Very good illustration of movement in the water. A very nice, well-rendered, unsure Morgan. Morgan fell for what seemed like an eternity. With water pouring all around him, he hit a boulder, bounced off and splashed into the cold, deep pool at the bottom. His leg hurt so, but with all the strength in his small body, he pulled himself onto the sandy beach at the base of the falls. He lay there for a time, catching his breath, and then tried to stand. As soon as he got to his feet, the leg that had hit the rock buckled, and Morgan fell to the sand again. With tears streaming from his eyes, he suddenly realized that he was in more trouble than ever before. With a few excited squeaks, the raccoons, who had been watching from high above, raced back to the meadow to find Morgan's mother. Ah, poor Morgan, though you can't really tell which leg was the injured leg. Also, ouch, bouncing off of a rock, ouch. Yes. 
And the plant life is always so well rendered. That's a lot of work. I wonder if by this time they were starting to use computers and they were able to copy and paste some of this stuff. Even if they were, we're talking a computer from the 80s. Oof. His mother, along with all of the other mothers and their babies, came and stood silently above the pool. There was no way for any of them to get down to help him, let alone guide him back up the waterfall. Morgan's mother choked back a sob when she realized that nothing could be done. With tears streaming down her face, she walked silently away from the falls, with all the other creatures following. Ouch. Morgan neighed softly and said, I love you, mother, and I understand. Ouch. <laughs> all alone now, the little colt lay in the cold sand, with only the roar of the mighty waterfall to console him. I see what you meant. Not sad so far, but sad. Also, another nice grass illustration. The beach he's laying on, the mountain behind him, the foliage again. The damp, dark night settled about him as he slept fitfully, dreaming of other times and other places, dreams of golden sunshine and brightly colored flowers, dreams of running through meadows of clover, dreams always ending the same, falling, falling through the mists of the falls and then to awaken and find that he was still all alone. Another nice night illustration, still pine trees. The bushes are slightly different. They're like less detailed, but that kind of makes sense for a night shot. Things become less detailed at night in a dimmer light to us humans. Ah, and poor little Morgan laying on the ground. I would have at least tried to get away from the cold water of the waterfall and maybe up onto the grass. I mean, he can't walk, but did he try crawling? Of course, he's probably too depressed to think of any of this. As the heavens began to brighten, the morning star lifted itself from the edge of the earth and began to rise majestically into the sky. The star rose and rose until, suddenly, it paused in mid-flight and a bright beacon of light shined down on the pathetic colt lying on the ground. Morgan had just begun to blink his eyes in wonder when a booming voice called out to him, Who are you, little horse, and why do you sleep on the cold, cold sand? Uh, I broke my leg. Can you get a little help here? Also, booming voices coming out of the sky from nowhere. We didn't really cover that last time. Yeah, I, I think they're implying a spiritual thing. Perhaps. My name is Morgan, he said. I am here because I didn't listen to my mother and foolishly fell from the rocks. All right, there's our lesson. Listen to your mother, kids. Yeah, most of the time they know what's best for you. Most of the time. Because remember, they're human too. <laughs> now I am waiting to die, for no one can help me. With that, he began to cry and cry. And we have a very wonderfully rendered Morgan. Nice muscle detail, the way the neck curves, the chest muscles, laying on the ground, looking up at the sky. A very nice morning sky with yellows and whites. And of course, those pine trees again. The bushes are still the fuzzy bushes from the previous drawing. I guess they needed these drawings in less time or something because they're a little less detailed than they have been in the other shots. And we can see the beach still underneath Morgan. Oh! Ah, uh, and that's what happens when Lux looks at the picture before I can read the words. Morgan, said the morning star, we can help you. But there are conditions. There's always rules. I'll do anything, anything at all, cried Morgan. Listen first, little horse, and then decide. If we save you, it's a we? I didn't know the morning star was a we. And we will if you want. You will be banished from all others of your kind forevermore. Nevermore will you be able to nuzzle next to your mother or her kind. For in order to save you, we must magically transform you into a unicorn. Thereafter, because you are of magic, you must live in a land of dreams and make-believe. As a sign of your pledge, 
You will forever wear on your head a horn cast of purity and twilight wonder. So let me get this straight. You can either die and not see your family anymore, or you can die and not see your family anymore. It looks like a win-win situation right here. Yeah, because you are of magic, you must live in a land of dreams and make-believe. If it's dreams and make-believe, isn't it kind of not real? So is this like a coma, or are you part of the Matrix? What is it? Yeah, because it basically sounds like you can die, or you can die. Make your choice. Though, this could just be those last moments of, I'm going to get sadder. I'm going to move on. Morgan thought of a gentler time when he had played in the meadow and nuzzled his mother and others of his kind. But he knew that his only hope of living was to accept. With a lump in his throat and a deep sigh of regret, he agreed. And here we have the transformed Morgan, a new model with a different paint job. The wonderful new accessory of the horn. Great for opening up bottles. Also standing on perfectly healthy legs, so... Yep, I was just trying to do a fake car commercial there. And, of course, the bushes, the trees, and we're back to flowers, which wasn't there before, and the beach is gone. Yes, so he possibly moved away from the beach, because the legs work now. Yes. The bright beams of the morning star changed to all colors of the rainbow, and the air sparkled with crystal delight. Morgan suddenly stood up. His leg was healed. As you can see, the illustrations are slightly off here. In a burst of golden light, the horn was affixed to his head for all of eternity. Then, as suddenly as it had happened, the morning star faded from sight, and Morgan, the unicorn, was left alone. He slowly began to follow the river down to the meadowlands below, but he turned once more to look at the waterfall. And there stood his mother. Goodbye, mother. I'll always love you. He neighed softly into the wind. Ah, at least he got to say goodbye. Mm, and yep. look at the detail again. This illustrator really knows how to illustrate the muscle tone in horses. We got the lovely flowers in the background, the river, some trees, some leaves. Mm-hmm. And I have another sentence to read on the page. <laughs> with a tearful eye, but a heart filled with hope for new adventure, Morgan turned and walked away. So what, you have to walk to the land of dreams and make-believe? Apparently. Into this life, Morgan was born to live, maybe die, as a unicorn. This was a children's book, right? For kids! And that is an odd... It's just the fact that it's looking at us head on is... Doesn't really work with an herbivore. Mostly because of the illustration. In real life it might be less off because we could see the dimensionality of the muzzle. But because everything kind of gets flattened in a 2D plane, it just looks weird. But it's well rendered. It matches what that would look like in real life. Yeah, a very nice picture. Very nice background. Very well done. And the usual question, what did you think of the story? Pretty much what I remembered. And the ending couplet is one of those ones that you can't really apply to your life. You know, a lot of them, about the gossips and wasting time and jokes and having a sense of humor and caring for one's friends those are all things you can kind of take with you not to be afraid of what's different but yeah the lesson here is kind of stuck in the middle and you don't get a preview on the front cover like you do with most of the books and it's definitely not in the ending poem the lesson is kids listen to your mother or you might die but it could turn out awesome and you could become a magical unicorn. So, 50-50? Yeah, hopefully now you can see why out of four books, I chose to read the one of Morgan's birth last. 
Because if this was the first one you read, this would really color everything in all the other ones. Because, okay, in the other books, Morgan always seems so happy and carefree and friends and play and appreciate others. and Yeah, well, he probably learned to live with it, being long-lived in a land of make-believe and dreams. Yes, but to go from this to Morgan Mine, where this girl is chasing him around trying to catch him, you'd be like, wait a minute, isn't he lonely? You know, as long as the girl isn't a total brat, wouldn't he appreciate the company? Well, she is kind of a total brat at first, and then she learns to appreciate things and gains patience, and that's when he approaches her and stuff. Yes, but... When Morgan references being touched by the morning star in Morgan and You, she's like, oh yes, I was touched by the morning star. Not, yeah, the morning star saved my life because I was an idiot and all the creatures that were staying in the meadow left me to die. Yeah, I don't think you would phrase it to anyone at that point. Yeah, but considering the circumstances under which he got his horn and became a unicorn... Why even go to the Morning Star? He already knew that there was a price for the Morning Star's help because he already paid a price. Why would he take you up to the Morning Star? Because he wanted to be good to his friend. Yes, but the Morning Star's help always comes with conditions. Yeah. And you was so blinded by his feelings of inadequacy that he didn't really read the contract. Hmm. And Morgan let him do it. Well, Morgan's a very nice guy. Yes. Because apparently, if you're young and stupid, if you survive it, you can grow up and be a nice guy. Apparently. This has been Morgan Morning, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. If you want to check out this iteration of the Morgan books, look below for an Amazon link. This one's probably still in print. I'm really not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So many children's books are too soft, but th this almost feels too hard. Just feel like shopping or want some distraction after this uh, sad tale of a young colt being forever separated from his friends and family. Uh, check out other entries in Ember's Reading Room. None of the other ones are this sad, at least not yet. Or you can do some online shopping. That's always a good distraction. Check out the Ebates link and save money at stores that you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not affiliated with or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel.